Hello everybody, welcome to Wine World TV, the best wine show anywhere. I'm your host, Mark Fusco. Now before we get started, make sure you're smashing that like button and subscribing to the channel. Every like and subscription really helps build the channel. Even better, spread the word to your friends about the best wine show anywhere. All right, so I'm getting caught up on my backlog of wines here. This is the first of a seven part series of New Zealand wine. This episode is focused on a new map I got for free from the Appalachian Marlboro Wine Organization. I will then review the three wines I received. After that, there will be a three-part in-depth series on New Zealand wine. Now, you won't see these episodes, the, the in-depth New Zealand ones, until March, as I'm completely isolating myself from society after I edit this first, these first four episodes to prepare for the Advanced Sommelier Theory exam on February 22nd. I'll then record the New Zealand wine series and then resume my other reviews. As always, uh, this map right here, and and the wines you'll get closer look at all this uh and the wines uh i received for free and i have free reign to review them however i wish now, I have a very long list of links for all seven episodes, other than the three wine review episodes that have links to each winery. The rest should be just about the same. So don't get confused if I don't, didn't discuss any link-related info in a specific episode. In other words, if you look at the links, you go, Mark didn't talk about that. I didn't. Or maybe I did. No, I, I probably didn't talk about that in that particular episode. It was probably in another episode or future episodes or other episodes. All right, so if you've been following me for the past few years, uh, you know I love maps and that I started my own map making project in Google Earth Pro due to the lack of high quality, accurate and precise wine maps. So I jumped at the chance to get this map and having the wines was a bonus. So to reiterate, one of the main reasons for me getting these samples is that the Appalachian Marlboro Wine Organization released a new map a few months ago. Okay, it's like a year now, probably. Uh, and I got this super nice large map as part of the deal. They have these for sale on their site, link below. Uh, from what I can tell, I think I got an A2 size. My copy is 14.75 inches by 21.125 inches. At least that's how I measured it the one time I did the script. Uh, you should be seeing a picture of, of uh, me with two yardsticks. I, mean, I think we have three or four yardsticks in the house. Who, who has yardsticks? Anyway, uh, so this size is between the ISO 216 standard of A2 and A3 sizes, but it's closer to the ISO 216 standard for A2, which is 16.5 inches by 23.4 inches. The ISO 216 standard for A3 is 11.7 by 16.5 inches. So it's somewhere in between. No matter what, I got a free high quality map with a total of three wines to review. Before we get to the map itself, let's orient ourselves with New Zealand and Marlboro. New Zealand is one of the most southernmost viticultural areas in the world. The only area that is farther south, that has vineyards farther south than New Zealand, is in the Patagonia region of Chile. The country is divided into the North Island and the South Island. Marlboro is in the northern part of the South Island. It is also by far the most planted region in New Zealand. Per the New Zealand Wine Growers website, here are the stats for the 2023 harvest by region. So for Northland, uh, the vineyard area is 73 hectares, tons crushed 182. Auckland is 276 hectares, uh, tons crushed were 709. Uh, Waikato or Bay of Plenty. There are 13 hectares of vineyards and they didn't, they didn't crush anything. Um, this is really not a, it's not an official area, but they do have a couple vineyards there basically. Uh, Gisborne is 1300 hectares. They crushed 10,967 tons. Uh, Hawks Bay is 4,805 hectares with 38,409 tons crushed. Wairarapa, is uh, 1,089 hectares with 5,528 tons crushed. I think I pronounced that one correctly. Marlboro is 29,654 hectares with 393,865 tons crushed. 
Nelson has 1,080 hectares with 11,472 crushed. North Canterbury is 1,464 hectares with 11,090 tons crushed. Central Otago is 2,054 hectares with 11,995 crushed. Waitaki Valley is 52 hectares with uh, 210 tons crushed. And then there's an other, they, didn't, they don't have like a vineyard area. This is probably just random vineyards throughout New Zealand. And they, they crushed 236 tons. Something to make note of with these numbers, the GI of Canterbury is not here as it's essentially only Wairapa and North Canterbury. South of North Canterbury is basically regular farmland and not vineyards. I'm sure there are some scattered there, but a quick look via Google Earth Pro didn't reveal any large obvious areas of vineyards. Also, while Wairapa is wholly inside of North Canterbury, it's not a sub appellation of North Canterbury based on how New Zealand's government lists the GIs. But yes, Marlboro is easily the most important GI to know in New Zealand. And that brings us back to the map. Like I said, it's on high quality parchment paper. This is the first edition of this map. The goal was to capture a combination of a topographical map and some old school New Zealand maps through the color palette, especially older maps that use pastel colors. They added what they called Teonga or treasures and special landmarks of Marlboro to the map. These landmarks are an important influence to the climate and terroir. These include, I'm trying to get this right, Mount Tapuai o Uineku, Uenuku, I think that's close, and the Richmond Range Mountains, or ones that reference the history and culture of the area, such as Wairo Bar, which is the first known landing of humans in New Zealand around 1300 AD. They also have a few major subregions listed, Wairau, Awatere, Blind River, and the Southern Coast. Now, for those of you studying for any kind of exam, the Marlboro GI does not have any official subregions, as in there are no additional GIs within Marlboro. Gilsom lists Awatere, Southern Valleys, and Wairo Valley as subregions. No matter which subregions we are talking about, there really hasn't been a map that defines these regions, at least for the purpose of wine, and I'd say in general. Another thing to make note of is notice that this map only covers part of the entire Marlboro GI. Like all the larger by area GIs in New Zealand, the boundaries match the normal administrative boundaries. This is essentially how most countries create their Appalachian system, mostly. The Marlboro GI actually covers a large part of the northern administrative section of Canterbury. I'm not talking about North Canterbury GI, but the northern section of the administrative region of Canterbury. Anyway, for the GIs, they initially use larger administrative areas and then will subdivide, usually continuing to use already established administrative areas. While I could explain further, I'll just leave it at that. Essentially, this northern-ish part of Marlboro is the only part that has significant vineyards. Like the rest, like the rest, like a lot of New Zealand, is dedicated to other kinds of agriculture. The New Zealand government divides agriculture into six categories in order of land use. Here are the six from top to bottom. Sheep, beef cattle, dairy cattle, forestry, grain, horticulture. This is basically everything else, as in uh, produce and includes vineyards. While this graph doesn't go beyond 2019, it's pretty clear that vineyards aren't going to overtake even grain anytime soon. But the bottom three aren't seeing noticeable changes, positive or negative, that the top three are. All right, enough of that. All of this is to say that you see a lot of obviously demarcated plots of green land from above, but most of that dedicated to most that's dedicated to non-horticultural product. Vineyards typically seem to be more concentrated in smaller parts of each larger GI. For this map, the Appalachian Marble Wine Group wanted to come up with a clearer definition of what they call macro regions. These are the aforementioned unofficial subregions. Here is their list: Wairau, Awatere, and Blind River, Southern Coast. For the Wairau, they felt it was pretty straightforward. They did subdivide it into the Lower Wairau, Central Wairau, and the Upper Wairau. However, they decided to make the Southern Valleys a subregion of the Wairau rather than treat it as its own macro region. The reasoning is that while there are five distinct valleys, all of them are tributaries of the Wairau River. Makes sense to me to organize it this way, for the most part. These five valleys are Waihopai, Omaka, Brancott, Ben Morven, Taylor. Farther south, we have the Awatere and Blind River. Now, Blind River is a bit new to me. Anyway, they've demarcated three areas, Coastal Awatere, Inland Awatere, and Blind River. It looks like they also included the Maori name Otuero uh, for the river. 
In Maori, it means red. I'll quote from the website to explain how they came up with the boundaries. Quote, Due to historic loose references, Awatair and Blind River macro region was more challenging. Many people, including local industry and wine professionals, refer to the Awatair as anything south of the Wairu. This categorically incorrect. I think they mean this is categorically incorrect. The Awatair refers to a river and a valley. On that basis, the Awatair has been defined as the catchment of the river because if you do not define it by catchment, then where is the boundary? The ambiguity would be limitless. Continuing, Blind River slash Otuero is a significant subregion by planted area. Historically, it has often been included with the Awatair. However, it is a separate catchment and coastal outlet. Consequently, Blind River is included as a separate subregion, but is included in this macro region with the Awatair. There are identifiable stylistic differences between the wines produced in each area. So essentially, we have two rivers that created distinct geographical areas that also produced distinct wines. I'll go with that as I haven't done any kind of side-by-side -side comparisons. It seems reasonable since we do the same all over the world. Then, even farther south, we have the southern coast. It's definitely a new designated area for me. Here, they divided the area into Ward, Uri slash Waima, and Kekarengu. The big thing differentiating this area from the others is a large presence of limestone. Not many vineyards are in this area compared to the rest of Marlborough. Within each of these major regions and some of the subregions, they further list smaller areas or regions. The five southern valleys are part of that along with many others. Most of these use the name of the town, but a few don't. Of course, I copied all of these areas onto my Google Earth Pro New Zealand map. Mine is a close approximation of their version. I didn't worry too much about getting super precise, but where I could definitely identify specific places where a border needed to be, I did my best to adhere to it. I think the only significant deviation I have is within the inland Awatair area where I created a small vertical valley between the two the map has. I know that was a mistake, but in looking at everything, I'm, I'm good with my mistake. Another goal of this map is to show the diversity of geography. It's not just a homogenous region. While we all just think of Marble Sauvignon Blanc as being all the same, it's not if you're sourcing the grapes from a more specific area, just like any other wine region. The difference is that almost none of us, me included, get to try wines other than those that just say Marble, partially because Marble doesn't have any official sub GIs, so they can't really use them on the front label. Now, that's not quite true when I wrote that. They can put things in the front label, but they can't they're, they're not official sub GIs. That doesn't mean wineries can't mention these areas in the description of the wine on the back label or put some on the front. And this is where I would tell you that these three wines I'll review over the next three episodes does this. And I would be lying to you, all is not lost. The websites for each winery do help narrow down the source of the grapes. One is a single vineyard other than sources from vineyards in the Wairu and Awatair, and another source is from four vineyards around the town of Renwick in what the map lists as Central Wairu. To be perfectly fair, all of these wines were released well prior to the release of this map, or at least the label approvals were done before the release of the map. Remember, this is a first edition that's only been out since the beginning of 2023, so about a year. Um, in order for all this to converge, you need to establish these areas better, and that's what the map is for. And this is where I think one of the goals of this project is. To establish evidence of distinct terroirs for the purpose of creating additional GIs within Marlboro, in order to do things like that, you need to give the governmental authority over these kinds of things some supporting evidence. Maps can play a role in that, whether it's something like this or more detailed geological maps or other scientific maps. Surveys, soil samples, and other things help out. And while I'm not, a, while I'm not looking forward to look, having to memorize more wine growing areas, if there's anything I've learned from my own map making project over the past few years is that these things do matter. Back to the map. So besides three major areas, what's cool is listing the mountain ranges. Each of these areas are essentially river valleys between ranges. And I like the topographical look to it. It really helps emphasize and define each area. Roads and town names are helpful. Over the years, so many mine maps lack any kind of landmarks other than a major city or town or even roads. And a lot of times they're not even like drawn properly, like not even to scale. And while it looks like it doesn't have a ton of roads on it, trust me when I tell you most of this area just doesn't have any major roads to speak of other than in Wairu, which on closer inspection has a decent indication of roads. Of course, they can't put all the names, but you can see the roads. But even in the other areas, they do show what little roads there are. 
This is one of those maps where the more you look at it, the more details you start to notice. Many maps are like that, but I just wanted to point out that this map is one of those. Compared to a lot of other wine region maps, this one definitely looks like significant work went into it. I can't say that about some other ones that look like a three-year-old drew it in crayon. And while they are creating defined areas by their own admission, these aren't intended to be the final versions. They expect to, redef they, they expect to refine and redefine some of the areas. They expect to add more subregions. This is a work in progress in a true first edition. So far, it looks like a great start. I'm grateful to get a copy of this for myself. It'll be a great addition to my own work in Google Earth Pro. Now, if you're interested in purchasing one of these, they have four versions, three print and one high-res PDF. For anyone studying New Zealand, I would say this map would be valuable uh, or invaluable. Uh, is that, that's the word, right? Yeah. Personally, I like digital versions, not just maps, but also books. Uh, just because I do so much in that realm and physical books and maps aren't what I reach for first. With that said, having something like this, uh, so having something like this quality in physical form is, is really nice. Now I have links below to a lot of things, but specifically I have a link to the map page of the Appalachian Marble Wine website. Okay, this is going to do it for today's show. If you enjoy what I'm doing here, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe, and then tell your friends, and we'll see you next time. Maybe with some more kick-ass maps? Later. <laughs>